and it's just the uh, 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 I think that's the uh, oh my god. I think that's the fact. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my May wrap-up for 2023, part 3 of 3. I read a total of 15 books this month, so if you're interested in the first 10, the first two parts of the wrap-up will be up on my channel, so you can check those out, but without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Not Here to Stay Friends by Caitlin Hill. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Sloane and Liam, who have been best friends since they were little, and for the summer, she is coming to visit him in LA. When she arrives, she discovers that Liam has suddenly turned very hot. He has been tasked with being the PA on set for his father's new reality TV show called Aspen Woods Future Leading Lady, or Awful. When one of the girls drops out unexpectedly at the last minute, Sloane steps in as her replacement with the promise from Liam's dad that he will use his connections in the film industry to help kickstart her writing career. Liam isn't thrilled with this idea as he tries to navigate his growing feelings for Sloane, and it's kind of the story of that. This was so stinking cute. It's a friends to lovers situation. Make that a childhood friends to lovers, and I eat that shit up every time. I really loved Sloane and Liam's friendship. I think they were so adorable. They were so supportive of one another, which I really love to see. They were always had each other's best interests in mind when they decided to do what they were going to do. I really like how we had points of views from both Sloane and Liam because I think that really helped us connect with the characters because you really got to see what they were both thinking and feeling in any given situation. I loved the mutual pining. I was definitely rooting for them the entire story. I thought the plot was really engaging. I was definitely invested in their story, so I definitely want to check out more from this author very soon. Also, completely obsessed with the ending. We love girls supporting girls, and that's all I'm going to say about it. So, four out of five stars. Next I have Lying in the Deep by Diana Urban and I gave this one a four out of five stars as well. This follows Jade whose long-term boyfriend dumps her over text message to start dating her best friend Lainey. So she is obviously devastated and feels the sense of betrayal. Months ago Jade and Lainey planned a semester abroad on a cruise ship together but Jade is convinced that Lainey is no longer coming since their roommate agreement went back to pending. When Lainey shows up the first day of the semester abroad with Silas in tow, Jade is not happy. But then a murder occurs and Jade finds herself the top of the suspect list and it's kind of the story of that. I really liked this. It was so over the top ridiculous that I ate up every second of it. I've discovered that I am a big fan of the locked room trope in mysteries and I thought that this one was really fun. I really loved the cruise ship setting. I definitely don't think that these characters felt like they were college age, more high school in my opinion, especially in their maturity levels and the way they handled certain things. Especially Jade, she got on my nerves pretty quickly. I think that the side characters were really interesting and I definitely like trying to piece together the mystery and try to find the motives behind each suspect on the list. I wasn't the biggest fan of the romance though. I honestly think that it could have been left out and the story probably would have still been the exact same. I really like the ending. I know a lot of people say it was pretty predictable but I did not see it coming. I've never read The Death on the Nile which this is a retelling of so I, I was caught blindsided but I was into it so overall. I had a lot of fun reading it. I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I have The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. I actually have the actual copy of this but my mom is currently reading it because I need somebody to talk to it about. So I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I really loved it. It is the sequel to Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber which I loved when I read it so I knew I was going to enjoy this. Just like I did with the first book, I finished this within 24 hours. It is so addictive. The writing style just makes you want to keep reading. I just can't get enough of Jax and Evangeline and their complicated relationship. Like, I could read a thousand stories about these characters. I just love how he calls her his little fox. I think it's so cute. I really love the banter between these two characters. I think that they are so 
good together. <laughs> and the whole will they, won't they vibes throughout the whole story was definitely the cherry on top for me. Jax is probably one of my favorite villains ever. I just think he is so interesting, especially because he always states that he is the villain. Like, he literally tells you, like, I'm not a good person. And everybody just keeps thinking he's gonna change, and he doesn't, and that makes me so happy every time. I also really liked that we got more of a backstory for Jax in this one, so you kind of fully understand why he is the way that he is. There are just so many reveals and things that I did not see coming that definitely kept me on the edge of my seat throughout the whole experience of reading this book. The last last 50 pages of this book gutted me, so if you are going to read this book, then be prepared to feel all of the feels because, like, it was a whirlwind of emotions, but I need book three and I need it right this second. But yeah, I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I love this series. I'm gonna continue to read Stephanie Garber because I always give her books, like, 4.5 to 5 stars, so clearly she's one of my favorite authors. Next up, we have Someone Is Always Watching by Kelly Armstrong. This is another one I gave 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one was a lot of fun. This follows Blythe, Gabrielle, Tucker, and Tanya, who are friends that attend the same high school. A recent violent event causes Blythe and Tucker to be forced apart from each other by their parents. Then Gabrielle has an episode where she is sent to the office. Blythe finds her covered in blood with the vice principal at her feet. The next day, Blythe wakes up and doesn't really remember anything that happened the day before, but she feels that something is a little bit off, so the three remaining friends decide to start an investigation to try to figure out what's going on. This book was so much fun. It had me hooked from the very first chapter. It was so addictive. I was so caught up in everything that was happening to these teens that I honestly didn't care that it was so unrealistic and over the top. I am a sucker for an unreliable narrator, so I absolutely loved how you could not trust literally anybody in this story and how everybody was being gaslit at some point in this. It just made everything so much more interesting trying to figure out who was actually telling the truth and who was just being manipulative. I just found the characters to be so intriguing and I loved learning all of their backstories. I think that Tucker and Blythe's relationship was really interesting. I loved how they kind of fed off of each other, whether that be for better or for worse. I definitely would love to read more about these characters and kind of where they go from the ending of this book, but I'm not really sure that that's a thing. I'm pretty sure this is a standalone, but I really enjoyed it. It was very drama-filled and over the top, and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. And then the last book that I have to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Queen Bee. This is by Amelie Howard, and I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. So after her best friend Poppy betrays her over a boy, Lady Ela is sent off to a, like, boarding school type of situation with her reputation in ruins. Now, years later she is angry and she decides that she's going to go back undercover to London society as Lyra and kind of infiltrate the ranks in order to get revenge. I honestly did not think that I was going to like this very much because I'm not the biggest fan of historical romances but this was so good. I just thought it was so much fun. I flew through it so quickly. I think that the alternating timelines between the past and the present was so smart in this because we really got the reason behind why Lyra was so keen on this revenge. I loved the main character, Isla, Lyra, whoever you want to call her. She was so fierce but also very honest and loving. I think that she definitely went through a lot of character development in this and it was very interesting to see that progression as the story went on. I will say that I thought that the love interest Keston was very annoying, but he definitely grew on me as the story went on. I really loved the banter between Kess and Lyra, especially when they were younger. I think they were so funny together. I also really love the side characters of Church and Zia. I think that Church was so interesting, and I really want a backstory, like, spin-off series for her. And then Zia was just such a comic relief and, like, light for this story. I definitely want a spin-off of her and, like, her story and, like, her falling in love. That would be so great. But yeah, I will definitely be checking out more from this author. I really liked their writing style and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. Alright everybody, so those were the last five books out of the 15 that I read for the month of May 2023. Like I said before, if you are interested in the first 10, check out the first two parts of this wrap-up and let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!